What does ONJ stand for? ONJ stands for osteonecrosis of the jaw. Um, it happens when, um, you know, because the way these medications act, over time, the osteoclasts, which are the, uh, so for bone remodeling, we need two kinds of cells, osteoblasts and osteoclasts. So the osteoblasts are forming bone, osteoclasts are destroying bone, and this constant turnover is important for to maintain healthy bone. Uh, to maintain healthy bones. So the, the bisphosphonates act by just inhibiting the osteoclast, which causes this imbalance, which results eventually in, because these bones are not constantly turning over the way they're supposed to be, they can outstrip their blood supply and you can have like avascular necrosis, which basically means that the bone is not healthy anymore. It's not receiving those good, healthy blood supplies, which makes them prone to bone overgrowths um, and to um, just necrotic bone and therefore just non-healing chronic bone problems. And that's called osteonecrosis of the jaw. What are symptoms that might let a patient know they may be developing ONJ? If you have like a persistent, like a, an ache or a, or a pain or sometimes a swelling, sometimes you can feel a protruding maybe bone or something in your mouth that shouldn't be there, you know, things like that. So a lot of these non-healing sore or wound or something in that nature generally happens around the um, face area, in the jaw, and the maxillo, you know, in those bones, the upper jaw, the lower jaw. And so um, that's why it's really important to have the dentist uh, look at it. But those are some of the common um, things that people experience. How is ONJ treated? So the treatment is, depends very much on the stage, how, how bad it is. Um, for if, it, if it's something simple in earlier stages of osteonecrosis, it's good oral hygiene, mouthwashes, keeping the area clean, antibiotics if there, is a, um, if there is a chronic infection. Sometimes you may need a prolonged course of antibiotics. Um, sometimes, you know, limited resections. Let's say there's a part that just needs to be taken out, you know, small areas, and the dentist and the oral surgeon will decide how invasive this needs to be. More extensive surgery is generally not preferred because then can it just caused this vicious cycle of creating more issues from bones that are just not healing. ONJ stands for osteonecrosis of the jaw, and it's basically where the bone inside the jaw disintegrates. It can be due to a lot of different things. Um, sometimes it's also referred to as RONJ, radiation-induced osteonecrosis of the jaw, because if you get radiation there, that can happen. Uh, but now we really, in myeloma, worry about bronch, bisphosphonate-related osteonecrosis of the jaw. And these are basically when you get drugs like Zometa or Iridia or even Exgeva, they can cause this, and it's pretty rare. Uh, the way we try to mitigate this is make sure you see the dentist and are kind of cleared before we start, because what really predicts for this problem is doing invasive dental work while you're on these drugs. So if you have a tooth that maybe should come out in a year or two, um, but you want to start the drugs, take the tooth out now, let it heal, then start the meds because you don't want to be on the medication and then have to have urgent uh, invasive dental work if you really need it. Best to do it up front. So it's really good oral hygiene, following up with the dentist and trying to get invasive dental work done ahead of time. What should a patient know about ONJ and dental work before starting treatment? It is recommended that all patients with newly diagnosed multiple myeloma uh, should, uh, should have optimal uh, bone uh, care, which includes starting them on either of the two agents, bisphosphonates or exgeva. Um, bisphosphonates commonly used in the clinic is, include zometa, and exgeva um, or denosumab is another agent that we use in the clinic. So these agents have been shown in studies to improve bone health and prevent future fractures. So it's recommended that every eligible patient starts on um, a bone uh, strengthening agents alongside myeloma treatment and we should have a discussion with your doctor in this regard. So one of the side effects uh, that uh, have been reported with these agents is osteonecrosis of the jaw or ONJ. ONJ is a condition where you have lesions in the jaw bone which can either be the upper or the low, lower jaw bone as such. It's a rare complication. It occurs in about uh, 3 to 4 percent of patients who receive the bone strengthening agents. The incidence of ONJ is common in uh, with either of the agents, uh, bisphosphonates and uh, rank-like inhibitors such as Exgeva. 
Um, so what we recommend for our patients is to have a very uh, comprehensive dental evaluation prior to starting a therapy feasible. And while patients are on uh, these agents, it's recommended they, they have a good dental follow-up, such as routine um, follow-up with your dentist. Um, you, um, you pr avoid invasive dental procedures if we can. Now, prevention of ONJs is, is, is the most important step as treatment for ONJ is rather limited and it uh, really involves surgical removal of the, um, the, the necrotic bone.